day. Watching the sunrise on a beautiful Sandus Mountain sure is an amazing way to start the day. By the way, I'm your host, Rich Klein, and I'm here with our special guest, Steve Nance, from Sand Hall Off-Road, and you're watching Driver's Seat, the show that takes you, the viewer, along for the ride with some of the biggest names of the sport. Today, we're on Broken Chain, which is rated 12, here in Sand Hollow in Hurricane, Utah. So, we're on Broken Chain, right? And uh, it's a 10-rated trail here at Sand Hollow. There's up to a 15 uh, rating, right? So, you're coming from Moab and Moab 4x4 Outpost, where they were in the 1 to 10 range, right? What, uh, what's some of the things that in Moab you saw and what warrants the, the 1 to 10 there and why we need maybe a little bit more rating? Well, the thing about Moab is it's, you know, it's a beautiful place, um, but the majority of the trails in Moab are, are really pretty easy trails. You know, we've got a lot of easy trails in Moab and, and a few hard trails. Um, out here in Sand Hollow, it's the opposite. It's more hard trails and a few easy trails. Um, though Rich is, is making a, a very good effort to um, break open some easier trails. Um, of course, there's you know lots of Jeep trails and stuff around here. I think there's I think there's over 115 trails in this area, which is just absolutely incredible. Yeah, we've got uh, about 115 in Southern Utah alone, and that kind of that's outside of Sand Hollow as well. So with Sand Hollow Off Road itself, being here local, you moved here about oh, how long ago, I guess? Uh, I've been here about almost two years now. The uh, the reason, one of the main reasons why I really wanted to move here was just because, you know, professionally, you know, rock crawling professionally uh, in the pro class, I need a place to practice, and Moab just really was not doing it for me as far as getting the practice that I needed to um, get a little better at what I do. Yeah, well, this is uh, kind of hardcore heaven as well, you know. We, we got so many different trails here that are uh, so extreme, right? And today being on Broken Chain rated 12, our rating system's a little funky. So everyone knows of our rating system between you know, originally it was one to five, right? When you first got in the sport, and then it eventually evolved into one, uh, one to ten because the level of difficulty of the trail had increased, and therefore the, the vehicles also increased, right? The, the capabilities. Absolutely. So, from there, now you're looking at um, an increased rating. Now the vehicles of with competitions and whatnot, like you're talking about, the uh, the level of difficulty has to match the vehicles itself again. So we've created a one to 15. And the 15 is usually what we call like a trail breaker type trail, where generally speaking, nobody has finished it without any aid. Once one person finishes it, it drops to a 14. Five people finish it, drops to a 13, and so on and so forth. Well, it's, it's um, as fast as the technology is moving in this industry, it's uh, probably not going to be uncommon to, to see people doing these 15 trails and knocking those ratings down in the near future, you know, within the next few years. Um, these, these cars, they're just like little spiders. I mean, it's just amazing what they do. Yeah. So we're coming up to the first obstacle here at Broken Chain. What are some of the things that you think about with this kind of side hill crack? Um, really articulates the vehicle. Are you, you have your lockers on? Do you use rear steer? What, what are you going through? Well, I'm going to try today to not use the rear steer as much as possible. I mean, there may be some instances where I may turn it a little bit, but you know, I, I want to let the uh, the drag axle guys know that they can actually do this stuff um, with little perseverance. Um, this obstacle, I've got, I've got my lockers on, um, and I'm just going to go nice and slow here. You know, a little bit of a side hill, but, but usually nothing, nothing a buggy can't handle for sure. So this turn here, 
this turn right there where I'm coming up to right now is, is a little difficult in the fact that it really does cross you up and um, and it's a little bit hard to make this turn it's pretty tight right through here so what are the some of the things that you've done to your vehicle to make it a little easier to navigate on trails like this well I mean the first and foremost thing is probably the Jesse Haynes fabrication portal set up um, you know, it gives you four more inches of ground clearance on the diffs, and that's absolutely huge when you're doing these harder trails like this. Um, and then, of course, lots of articulation and keeping the buggy as lightweight as is absolutely possible. Uh, this car weighs just a little over 2,900 pounds with water in all four tires, and so it's, it's a pretty lightweight vehicle. The reason why we put water in the tires is just for increased traction, especially when you're you're climbing a, a really steep obstacle. Those front tires will bite a little bit harder and and um, help you pull help pull the buggy up over the obstacle. Yeah. So you you take a lot of what you've learned in extreme rock crawling and the competitions and whatnot and trail braking, and you apply that to customer vehicles at San Hollow Off-Road as well, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's no sense in building a vehicle if you can't make it the best that it can be. It doesn't matter if it's a Jeep or a buggy or, you know, a Toyota or whatever. Um, you know, you always want to make everything the, the best that it could possibly be and uh, use the technology that's available. So... It, it takes years of learning too. I mean, as far as the, on a fabrication standpoint, um, on how to build vehicles that actually do work. Yeah. And it, it, it's a lot of practice and it's a lot of trial and error. And that's why, you know, for years I built myself a new vehicle every, you know, every couple of years, uh, because it's, you know, as a fabricator, it's, it's fun to build. And you always got, as soon as you get one car done, you've got ideas for the next car. And so, you know, and that just, you know, it just increases your skill level. What I like is that you take all that engineering you've learned, all the little tricks, trips, sorry, uh, tricks of the trade, and you, you put it into a real world situation for your customers where when they come out to a place like Tan Hollow, which is for a lot of people pretty intimidating, uh, you're able to make it really work for them, you know, let the vehicle do the work for you. Absolutely. So I'm going up this, this first big crack here, and um, and this one's a little tricky. Uh, you know, obviously, anytime you're in a crack, you want to just straddle that crack and uh, try not to slip in. But, but this one, you want to turn out of it a little sooner than you think. Um, if you don't, then you're going you're gonna to scrub down and... Uh, that that passenger tire will scrub down the rock, and then you will have to take a backup. Um, backups necessarily aren't bad, but sometimes in cracks it, it can be bad because you can get yourself in worse situations. Kind of like uh, a couple years ago in Trail Hero for me, when I was in that humongous humongous crack at the Trail Breaker. And I had to back up, and I got a little off the line, and then I ended up slipping in the crack, and, and that pretty much ended my day right there. Um, so you really got to watch those cracks. I'll tell you, as a uh, host on the show, typically being able to ride with the driver, this is considerably more difficult <laughs> <laughs> to... Well, hike, uh, hike up stuff that, uh, generally speaking, you're driving up. I'm driving up. Well, you know, the funny thing about that is, and I always say it, it's, it's funny that you can't hike up these obstacles, but you can drive up them. I mean, these, these vehicles are just so amazing. Yeah. It's, as, uh, it's definitely difficult to hike up something like that waterfall you just drove up was insanely easy for you but difficult to walk up for sure right i mean you can feel the angles in these cars you know when you're climbing up that big stuff and 
And, I mean, you can really tell how steep that stuff really is. You've recently brought your son into it as well. Tell us a little bit about Tyler's efforts. Well, uh, Tyler, you know, when he was real young, you know, we started him out sitting in the in my lap and driving and, and then eventually progressed him up to, you know, driving the obstacles on his own. And, um, and now he actually is driving a car very similar to mine. Um, it's actually a world-class car. It's uh, Jesse Haynes' Prickle. And I believe that Jesse probably won the uh, national championship in that car probably five or six years. Um, so it's a really good car, and Tyler's super excited. Um, all I can say is he's really spoiled. So, <laughs> but, well, and uh, as a dad, I know I, I think every father wants to be able to give that to their son a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, he enjoys it, and I enjoy it. And the funnest thing for us is we can do it together. Okay, so this, um, you know, talking about tricks of the trade, uh, bringing that back, um, this is a good, a good obstacle here where typically – uh, obstacle like this. I'm going to throw it in front wheel drive only and i um, going to turn my locker on in the front and um, it, it just basically makes that front climb a little bit easier. Uh, you will see up here further into the trail there's there's obstacles like this but are, are much much bigger and um, definitely will be uh, more obvious. So just throw it back into four-wheel drive there. Um, I'm going to stay a little bit high on the right, just uh, so I don't slip down in this crack down here. And, uh, you know, sometimes if you slip down in a crack, you can get yourself pretty stuck. So, Yeah, so now you're kind of on this uh, side hill. Right. And, uh, as you kind of traverse over this next couple spots, what are some things you do to kind of keep the vehicle from sliding downhill? Well, you always got to think ahead. That's the biggest thing. You always want to look at your line. Um, that way, when you get to that portion of the trail, you know what you're going to do. Um, this, again, I'm going to just kind of stay to the high side. Um, that's, that's pretty standard um, when you're leaning over. You know, it's, you know, it's pretty standard to want to just stay to the high side so you don't get yourself wedged down in the crack. So I'm thinking there's a big crossover right up here where yeah. we're where we may go ahead and uh, put it in front wheel drive again. It's it's coming up here pretty soon. Well, I know the uh, the crossovers on this trail are, are pretty drastic. They there's, are. There's one that's got to be what like a five foot wall almost. Right. Right. Yeah, you're gonna get you know you're gonna get some off camber stuff on this trail, and I. You know, personally, I always enjoy the off-camber. I like pushing my car and myself to the extreme um, because then you know what your car can do, especially when you get in a competition setting. Um, you'll know exactly what your car will do. Well, and one of the things as you're coming around here, we're going to go over to Val's video. You can see the valley in the background. I'm there. You'll see me wave. Uh -huh. See the lake there, and just this trail is very, very scenic as well. Uh, you're going to want to... Right. I missed the turn. <laughs> yeah, no big deal, man. You know, that's a, that's kind of the neat thing about this area is, is a lot of these trails are so new that, you know, they can be a little difficult to follow, and I know that that's why Rich is doing what he's doing as far as this mapping and um, and doing these certain things like this. So that when people do come out that have never been here, they will have uh, the ability to follow these trails. So when you go to make a turn like this, off camber, going over to your left like this, right? what, what are you doing inside the cab? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in neutral. I'm going to put it in front wheel drive only. Uh, I'm going to put it in gear. I'm going to pull my cutting brakes. And I'm going to turn. I'm just going to let this car slide around. Like so, and then um, now I'm just going to pop it back into gear again. So that's what they call a front burn, and um, it's a, a really a quite easy way to make a, a good sharp turn. We use that a lot. I mean, trail riding and in competition, it's 
it's something that if you practice, um, you will use it a whole bunch. Pretty much anybody that has an atlas or the ability, uh, or their transfer case has the ability to have twin sticks, then anybody with those twin sticks can do those maneuvers. Yeah. Uh, in twin sticks, you can actually take an old uh, Jeep transfer case and modify it to do the same trick, right? Absolutely. Dana 20, Dana 300. Um, you can you can definitely twin stick those. In fact, this transfer case in this car is a Dana 300. This is out of like a early to mid 80s uh, Jeep CJ. How funny is that? You're in a you know essentially a, one of the most capable rock crawlers in the world, and you're using old 1970s technology. Right, right. Well, you know it is lighter and smaller than an Atlas, and I I do. Uh, swear by atlases. I mean, they are most certainly the best transfer case on the market. Um, but for this application, because this car is so small, I decided to go with the 300. So this this obstacle here is is quite tough. Um, it took me a few tries to really figure out the line on this one. So I'm going to just kind of stay close to this left wall, and um, you'll see a little bit of a notch. I'm going to put my my driver's tire in this little notch right here. And I'm going to try to keep that tire right up against that rock. Um, this is really going to flex you out. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got my front locker on, I've got my rear locker off. And I'm going to pull on this, this cutting brake on this driver's rear tire to just, just try to keep me from slipping down this big wall. And now you kind of see the vehicle pivot, right? Or uh... yeah, yeah, you can really, you can really feel that vehicle. I mean, artic articulate to the max right there. Um, okay, so now I've got my fronts up, so I'm going to go ahead and lock my my rear locker in, and then I'm going to just kind of try to keep that same line with these rear tires. Just going to keep right up against this little notch right here, and uh, it's really going to pitch you over. So just be be ready for it when it does. And it definitely feels like you're going to roll over. Yeah, and right Right here feels pretty crazy. But, you know, in reality, I, I think you're pretty safe. Um, of course, with these, these BFG tires, there's a lot of traction. So we were able to just walk that today. Uh, believe me, I've struggled on that numerous times. So we're starting to get into the real fun stuff up here. Got and th this kind of separates... Uh, you know the, the vehicles and the driver skills and and whatnot. At this obstacle, we you have quite a bit of rollovers. It's kind of just a funky little notch, right? Yeah, this one here, this little believe it or not, this notch doesn't look big, but it's a it's a little funky. Um, I usually just drive up, and then I try to get my my driver's tire up on this rock ledge here, and and just bring it on around like that. Now, your rear just fell in that hole. That's where most people kind of canter over or roll. Right, yeah. If, you're, if your front tire is up on this big ledge, your front uh, driver's tire, it's going to help counter counteract that when that rear tire drops in that hole. And, um, and then, you know, if you, if you really finesse, you can just drop that tire in just nice and gentle. Kind of a just slow, controlled drop, right? Right. I've found through the years of doing this that I like to just just creep and crawl all these obstacles. I don't I don't really throttle down um, unless I absolutely have to. I think I'm right there with you. I can't stand bouncing my vehicle around. Right, absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to do another burn, another front burn right here. I'm going to lock this rear tire in the notch of this this rock. And this is another good trick. You know, if you can lock a rear tire in. Um, I'm going to put it in front wheel drive, pull my cutting brakes a little bit, and just kind of bring this puppy around like so. And, um, you know, anytime you, you're in front wheel drive, you, you usually always have the ability to throw it into four wheel drive on the move. So, like, well, in, like in this crack, for instance, we're going to start off in front wheel drive just to get the front tires up. And while I still have pressure on all the gears, um, I'm going to just put it in four-wheel drive. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to slide it into four-wheel drive. And, and 
That keeps you from slipping off the rock. Well, and one thing I noticed when you made that pivot was that you had um, the rear disengaged. So one tire was moving forward, even though it was under not under power. Right, right. And sometimes we'll do that. We'll leave it in four-wheel drive and just get one tire to do its thing. Um, so here I'm going to wiggle the, wiggle the tire a little, the wheel a little bit, and I'm just going to try to get these fronts to, to, to pop up on this rock. There we go. We're starting to pop up. Oh, slipping down. And that's, that's what I was saying. If you stop, a lot of times you're going to slip down. So a lot of times while we're, we're getting those front tires worked up, we're just going to slap it into four-wheel drive. And uh, just like any crack, you want to try to keep your vehicle level. So you want to go real slow, real slow. And um, if you feel it start to, to slip down on one side, then you turn to that side and bring that side back up again. So yeah, this is this is a pretty good crack. I mean, it's probably 10 foot deep by the time you're setting up top here. Oh yeah. And uh, so I, I just felt my driver's side start to slip down a bit, so I turned a little bit driver just to bring it back up. Um, you always want to watch those rear tires in a crack because that's what's going to get you in trouble. And um, so if you feel like the rear's slipping down, which my passenger rear is right now, I'm just going to turn a little bit passenger, not much. Just try to bring that tire back up. The nice thing is just trying to feel the car, right? What, what the car wants, and a lot of that is dictated by the back axle. So yeah. you get into this position, and you want the rear tire to start climbing. You start hunting the front tires where you need the rear tire to go. And then once you get the rear into place, you can work the front. For a non nursery vehicle, this is vital because you don't have control over where you put the rear tires besides with just your front steering. Right, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's super critical with a uh, non-rear steer car to really watch those rear tires. Um, you know, a rear steer car, it's easy. You just turn the rear steer and put it wherever you want. But the, the non-rear steer guys, you really have to watch your front tires to position your rear tires where they need to be. So here's another, another example. I'll put it in for front wheel drive, and I'm going to try to get these front tires to climb up. And then once they start to climb up, I'm just going to pop it into four-wheel drive. And it's kind of like a seamless move, right? As soon as it climbs, yeah. you, you apply pressure, pop it back in, let the vehicle kind of maneuver and eat that way. Absolutely, yeah, because if you, if you let those gears relax, 90% of the time it's going to slip off the rock. Okay. So, as you uh, have been wheeling out here, and you got a little bit of a break in front of you now, what, uh, you know, how long have you been driving this vehicle? How, how is it that you feel this comfortable in your car now that you, you, you know when the rear tire is going to drop and, and what to do to keep the vehicle on all four tires? Right. So I built this car about two years ago, um, and I really built it to step up my game for the competition setting. And, um, uh, you know, moving out here to San Hollow, it allows me to go out and push this car to the absolute li limit, which is so important if you want to get really good at this sport. And um, so, you know, able to, to come out and, you know, figure out its, you know, side hill capabilities and its climbing capabilities and how it drops off and, and fine-tune the car so after driving this car for about a year now it, it it just feels like a comfortable chair to me i mean it's you know i'm very comfortable in it i know what it'll do and and i know where the limits are now one of the things i think is really cool is even though you might be located you know previously in moab now here in hurricane utah you've got customers from all over the world right oh i do yeah i've got customers as far as Liechtenstein and um yeah all over the world I, I you know i the moab store and, and i love moab i uh do miss moab 
Um, you know, it's a great place. I've met a lot of really great people. Um, I, I do believe that Sand Hollow will be the next Moab. I think it's going to get really super popular. And so I decided to get my foot in the door and, and get here. I think that says a lot to not just the the terrain itself, but also, you know, maybe the city and how it's business friendly and, you know, the, the local community embracing the off-road life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at Sand Hollow in itself. I mean, it's just an OHV area. You can drive, if you want to drive on that rock over there, you go over and you drive on that rock, you know, and, and I think that is just absolutely incredible. You do not see that really I mean, virtually anywhere else in the country. So this is one of those unique spots, crossovers, right? Yeah, this is this is one of the bigger crossovers. And uh, for, from comparison, you have 42-inch tires. Yes, 42s. And again, I'm going to put it in front-wheel drive, and I'm just going to kind of nose up to this thing, and I'm going to get those front tires to, to climb up on top. And then while they are climbing up on top, I'm just going to slip it into four-wheel drive. So, okay, so you feel these tires coming up, getting a little, little crooked here. Hopefully they're going to climb. There we go. And then I'm just going to just pop her in four-wheel drive and just, just keep this momentum going. And it's good to be crossed up on the crack like this, right? You don't really want to square up to it. No, if you, if you square up to it, a lot of times you're just going to belly up. And... Um, and that's always a problem when you belly up because obviously you're stuck. So, so this is, this is a pretty tight turn right through here. I might have actually taken this turn a little bit late. But uh, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to put it in rear wheel drive this time. And we're we're going to do is we're going to uh, push our brakes. We're going to drive forward, and we're going to just slip this rear down if we can. Well, and one thing that might help is being uh, locked oh, yeah, in the I got, rear. I got to lock my rear in. Yep. <laughs> okay, we're going to try that again. And, yeah. and so sometimes, too, if you turn your tires one direction, and then you start your burn, and then you turn those tires, see how it's just bringing that car down? Yep. And, and that's kind of a, a cool little trick of the trade. Okay, so I think I'm burned down as far as I can, so I'm just going to put it back in four-wheel drive. I'm just going to drive forward, kind of getting myself into a little bit of a pickle here. There we go. Like I say, I'm really trying not to use this rear steer. Well, and one of the things that is uh, interesting, and I've known this as a driver doing this show, is trying to talk about what you're doing while you're doing it in very difficult situations is really difficult. I mean, it, it as is. a driver, it's a whole nother element to the wheeling experience. Right. So it's just kind of cool to uh, to be able to experience this as a driver. It's a totally different challenge, but at the same point, it is uh, it's very nerve wracking. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I I mean, my my character, I'm just kind of quiet anyhow. I mean, anybody that knows me will attest to that. And um, so it does make it a little hard to talk and drive and, and watch your lines. But, you know, I'm having a great time. And, and I hope everybody out there watching this video is having a good time, too. So, yeah, I think that uh, just getting a little insight onto who you are as you come up to the next obstacle. You know, recently you brought Tyler into the sport and he got a new rig. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so, you know, like I said before, we ended up buying Prickle from Jesse Haynes. Uh, it, you know, kind of a funny story. Uh, he had, he didn't have the car for sale, but I, I bugged, I kept bugging him about three years ago, like, hey, sell me that car, sell me that car. And he always told me, he said, okay, well, I'll give you a first option if I ever decide to sell it. And, um, and so recently, about his, oh, six, eight months ago, he, approached me and said, hey, look, I'm going to sell the car. You want it? And <laughs> so I was kind of committed at that point. So I ended up buying it from him. And, and But it's really been a blessing uh, because, you know, I can get out with my son and do these things that, that we both enjoy. 
So we got one big wall right here ahead of us. This thing here, um, I usually try to take it a little bit higher on the left side. Uh, I'm sure you could probably shoot just straight up the wall, but I kind of like the challenge of, of getting a little high on the left side. And, and obviously, uh, as soon as we get over the top of this, we're going to make a sharp left anyhow. So I'm going to uh, put it in two-wheel drive again and get, just wiggle these tires. Just going to wiggle these tires and get them to start to climb up. Okay, so you can see my tires won't go any further, so I'm just going to pop it into four-wheel drive and then just, just kind of keep that going. So now my car, so everybody knows my car is a 105-inch wheelbase, which is, is quite short. Um, so, you know, anybody that's out here with a little bit of a longer car, you should really not have an issue. So, yeah, and I run a 108 inch wheelbase and it's only, I mean, uh, just a, a tiny bit different, but it makes a whole difference on the trail. Oh, it's huge. I mean, every couple inches in a car makes a big difference on climbability. The nice thing about this car is it's balanced really well, so it, it climbs as good as a, you know, 108 inch wheelbase car. Yeah, it's, and I mean, your low center of gravity, uh, the weight bias all has a play to do with that, and then, of course, the suspension geometry and setup as well. Right. Yeah, all that all that stuff certainly comes into play. So I got another little crack here. Turn my locker on. Again, we just want to try to keep it, you know, just try to keep your car level. This turn, this is another kind of a, a funky little turn. You're, you're probably going to drop drop a tire in it, um, but that's okay. We're just going to let it go down nice and gentle. There we go. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, being a local definitely has its advantages on this trail as well. You get a chance to uh, get on it a couple times and know the line. And I know that people traveling here, they're going to really appreciate the fact that you took the time to talk about how you get through this trail, which is one of the most difficult trails here at San Hollow. Yeah, I um, really enjoy doing the hard stuff, and, and I you know, would hope that people would want to do this trail. And I think there's a lot of people that are going to want to do this trail. And, you know, the thing is, is we want to let people know that, hey, you can do a hard trail like this and you don't need to be scared. You know, just take your time, pick good lines. And um, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to break your vehicle. You just need to take your time and, and get through the trail and you'll be just fine. Yeah, I think that... Uh one of those ideas, you know, take your time, don't break your vehicle. There's little tricks like going in front dig only, not being all locked up. And so what's one of the things, why does not being locked up, what's that do to the vehicle if you get into a position where you have to use front dig instead to maybe alleviate pressure? Well, you'll, you'll see, you probably have seen this video a lot that I'm turning my lockers on and off. I normally don't even have them on until I need them. And um, it, it really helps as far as making the turn. You know, if you've got these lockers on all the time, you're gonna have a really hard turn in your car. And not only that, it's really stressful to the components of your car. So I run without the lockers until I need them. Yeah. So I'll get it over an obstacle, turn them, uh, you know, I'll turn them on, get over the obstacle. And when I'm done with the obstacle, I just shut them off again. So so this, this little wall right here, um, I found that it usually works best if you really kind of take this at a diagonal. Um, if you square up on this wall, your front tire is going to hit this big ledge up here, and it's just kind of like a double whammy. Um, so we're going to take this one just at a little angle, and then once, he, once these front tires are up, I'm actually going to turn to the driver, and I'm going to really try to 
really try to get this at an angle here. Um, because one thing, again, or one thing about this obstacle is you'll belly up really easy on this one. So by turning your, your front tires to the drivers, it's going to give you that clearance, that belly pan clearance that you need to just crawl right up it like that. And it's amazing. You just drove up a straight vertical wall that's taller than your vehicle is. Yeah, these vehicles are, are absolutely crazy. Well, you know, with that being said, you know, Trail, or I'm, I'm sorry, Rich uh, puts on an event called Trail Hero, and I, I'm sure most of you have heard of it, but, you know, first of all, it's a fun family event. If you want to just come out and trail ride, um, you know, it's, they have registered trail rides, they have golfing tournaments, they have beach parties, they have water slides, they have, I mean, everything, just about everything you can imagine, but one of the events that they have is called the Trail Breaker, and Rich will pick the nastiest, hardest stuff out here, and he'll put 10 of the best drivers in the, in the world on that course. And it's a, it's a time competition. The, the guy that gets through all the courses the fastest is going to win. But it surely isn't a rock race. No, it's not a rock race. I mean, because the obstacles are challenging enough that you, you, I mean, you can't go fast, but you've you got to go a little faster than the next guy. Um, but, you know, the, the, the trail breaker, I mean, you, th you know, you look at that wall that I just climbed, and it's really nothing compared to the stuff that Rich is putting us on it in that, in that trail breaker uh, competition. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly the most extreme stuff that I probably have ever done. And that's, that's exactly why I enjoy it. Well, and one of the things that I, I enjoy is watching you guys do this kind of crazy stuff as well, and then knowing that, you know, you've been in the sport for a long time, uh, competition-wise, trail riding-wise, building vehicles, right. and, heck, you've won two of these things now, these trail breakers. Well, I have, and, and I've been lucky, and I've been blessed, and... Um, I hope I can uh, hold on to that title for a little longer. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I think it's so cool that uh, before you won the Trail Breaker, uh, competition-wise, you know, traditional rock crawling competitions, um, the, uh, you know, how many wins did you have in, you know, old school rock crawling type events? Right. You know, I've I've had a few wins here and there. Nothing nothing substantial you know i'm always i'm always close to the top and never quite never quite there um but i really enjoy it and that's why i do it so rich we, we've got two options here this is basically the top of the trail and um you know in my opinion i think the normal line or the normal trail is probably just as hard as the optional line um which way do you want to go rich well I'll be honest, uh, we're going to probably end up going uh, the, the more extreme route, which is actually, for your vehicle and your, your skill level, pretty easy. And it's a, it's a route that I actually have had a really difficult time doing, and I've always taken a different line than everyone else through it. Right. And uh, fortunate enough to have you on the trail with me yesterday in this same spot, and you showed me the line, and then, and then I just drove right up it. So yeah. once you see the line, I think I think it actually is easier than – the standard trail. I, I I agree. I agree with you right there, buddy. Well, you know, and once you saw that line, I mean, you popped up it in two seconds. I mean, it was no big deal. So it's it's very intimidating, but but it's also really super exhilarating. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely it looks crazy, and it's hard to imagine a vehicle just driving right up. Right. But uh, but you do it, and it and you do it. For, pretty dang easily yep so this one here it's you can kind of see that this rock is kind of at a diagonal angle i usually just kind of line up on that di diagonal and i just kind of drive up that ramp um there's there's probably other ways to do this obstacle but but i found that this works pretty good um what's going to happen though is your rear at the very end here and you'll see your rear is going to want to slip in it's 
gonna this right rear passenger rear tire is gonna want to slip in this crack, and that's okay. You're not gonna go anywhere. I just keep driving up, and then I kind of wait till the last minute here, and then I turn a little bit into it and come right up. So um, that is a tricky spot. I've seen people roll over there. Yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here we're at the big, this is the big optional climb. This is kind of the finale. Um, I'm going to cinch my belts up here a little bit. You know, lockers on. Well, and I want to walk to the front of this and kind of show everyone how how big this is, right? I'm at the bottom. This is actually right right here is where you want your tires to come on the driver's side tire. Right, right, right yeah. through the bottom of this crack here. And you see up here, that's where you're, you want to get your, your front tires, but it's really difficult to to imagine driving up this that way. Yeah, the thing is, is this this is going to want to kick your front to the right. So you got to be careful because if you go on it, if you if you hit this a little hard, you could potentially kick your front tires to the right far enough to where you're going to roll down in the sand. So we're going to want to hit it with just enough momentum that that we don't kick it too far, but we got it. We have have to have enough momentum. To actually get the front tires up, and um, so, so it's just kind of like a not a not a bump really, not really even like a get it, and not a crawl. It's just that a couple of ticks above a crawl, just kind of a, a steady yep. drive. Just a steady drive, yeah. You you do, definitely don't want to hammer down here because it, it probably won't work well for you. So um, the biggest thing is get these get your front left tires in that crack, and it doesn't even look like that should be the line, but trust me, I've tried it many different ways. And this is the line. I mean, you get your front tires in this crack, and that's where you want to be. And that includes the rears. You got to make sure that your rears are going to go right where your front tires are. So I am going to I'm going to kind of maneuver this rear over a little bit with this rear steer, uh, just just for the sake of saving some time. But uh, once you get lined up, lockers on, seat belts tight, helmet on. Everybody should wear helmets nowadays. I mean, with this, the stuff that we're doing, super important. I've had, you know, several buddies that have rolled over and, and cut their heads open and everything else. So, you know, helmets are just a good thing to wear. But um, we're going to see if we can make this in one shot. So I'm going to just kind of roll into it. And then when I feel like I'm ready, I'm just going to kind of throttle it just a little bit. So, so here we go. Okay. So you saw the front kick around. And that's what you got to watch because if this front passing your tire falls off of that ledge, you're probably going to roll over. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn left, and we're just going to just try to creep up, just just nice and easy, nice and easy. Now you're going to want this left front tire to get up on that wall, and if you have rear steer, go ahead and turn your rear steer to the left as well. It's going to help level you out. And then just just creep up it, and that's that. Kind of crazy how you just made it like it was nothing. Like it it just baffles me that you're able to do that. <laughs> well, there's lots of lots of um, I guess you could say experience. You know, just all the years of competing and pushing myself to the limits. Uh, but you know. Anybody can do that. I saw you do it yesterday, Rich. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it kind of just, it's crazy. Yeah, just just as easy. I mean, you popped right up it, just as easy. So, And and that's one of those that uh, you don't really need rear steer. It is helpful, but it's not one of those things that's real necessary. No, it is not. So this next little climb is, at this point, the trail is just about done. You've got right. one little climb, break over, and drop. Right. Super simple. Uh, really, a, a JK could do this if if need be. Sure. But uh, this is about the the tail end of the trail, right? Yeah, yeah. We've got this this climb and maybe one other, and then you know the nice thing is once you get over that right there, you know that hey, I'm good. Yeah. So <laughs> you made it. <laughs> yeah, we made it. And I guess it's not over till it's over, but uh, these last couple climbs, really no big deal. You know, sometimes I wonder what some of these guys were thinking when they made some of these trails. <laughs> well, 
but you know, I'm very happy they did. <laughs> so I don't know what I was thinking when I made this trail, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, we were just kind of goofing around out here, you know. Right. And, right. And it, 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 kind of hunting obstacles and having fun with it, and and next thing you know, we're we've got a route kind of planned, and uh, and then you know, now we're now we called it a trail, right? And, and it's, it's a labeled, you know, mapped, advertised known trail. Well, you know, if, if for the people out there that don't used to design uh, rock crawling courses uh, for We Rock, and um, so he can really, you know, he can really look at the rocks and he can really see these lines that maybe some other people can't see. Um, you know, he's just got that talent and. Um, you know, maybe uh, wonder. You know, what is this guy thinking? But you know, in reality, he's picking really good lines, and he's he's making really awesome trails. There's the end of it. Really appreciate everyone tuning in to Broken Chain here with San Hollow Off Road. Of course, we'll see you on the trail next time. Okay, sounds great. All right.